it is me, Jeanette, aka Sweet Jean, and I'm having the most trouble uploading videos that are more than a minute and a half to two minutes long. For whatever reason, my phone keeps getting very, very, very hot, and then it shuts down. And it's like so hot to the point where I'm like, it's going to fry itself. So I don't know what's causing that. And I've tried it, you know, um, regular. And then I've tried it on airplane mode. But my phone is just not allowing me to record videos. So um, I've attempted probably four times already within the past two weeks to try and figure out why I'm not able to record without my phone getting so hot um i do apologize hi i do apologize about the shaking um i'm just really shaky lately and um i haven't updated you guys in a very long time so i had written some notes as to um where i left off and so I'm just going to refer to my notes, and there's a lot, a lot of notes here. So forgive me if um, you see me looking off to my notes, and um, I'm, I just took some medication, and one of those medications causes me to be like a little bit foggy brain, and um, I'm, you know, I'm fatigue. Hi, Kim. Hi, Shaz. I'm already fatigue, and... Um, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I feel, I feel 10 years older than what I really am. Hi, Alyssa. Um, so, like I said earlier in the video, um, I've just been having a lot of trouble recording on my phone without it getting super hot and then shutting down. So, hi. I'm just reading the, the comments. Hi, Yolanda. So I'm going to go over my notes so I don't forget anything. And it looks like a lot of notes, but I'm just very detail oriented and I'm actually not feeling too, too well. I've had a long morning so far and a long afternoon so far. Um, so forgive me if I kind of like skip around. So um, last month, probably going on six weeks now. My, um, I had an appointment with my um, endocrinologist for my diabetes. So I did lab work and then um, I think it was like on a Thursday or Friday and then I was going to see her on like, um, I think, believe it was Monday or Tuesday. So I did labs first, but then her, she had her office call me on Saturday, which I didn't even know that they were open on Saturday. And um, they, the office is like the employees are there, but they don't see patients. They're doing like paperwork and billing and insurance and sending out authorizations. Um, was like, where, how is she doing? Thank you. And so um, she had her office call me and she was very worried about my red blood count. Um, she said anything below a nine is typically a cause for transfusion. And I was reading at a six. So she didn't want to wait till after the weekend or until Tuesday to see me to tell me this. So she called me, she had her office call me on Saturday to tell me. And so um, I waited until Monday because I typically have low red blood cell count anyway. But um, it just makes me lightheaded and um, kind of dizzy a little bit. Kind of like if I had vertigo, kind of. So anyways, I called my oncologist and I spoke to the triage nurse. And so when I was talking to her, she just sounded like she was juggling a lot of things at once and she wasn't giving me her 100% attention. 
And I felt like she wasn't taking it as serious as I felt it needed to be. And my endocrinologist, you know, called me on the weekend to tell me that my blood was low. You know, she didn't want to wait, so she wanted me to call my oncologist. So anyways, um, her phone's ringing, and she's like, I'm sorry, um, let me place you on hold. And I, she says, the doctor's um, calling on the other line. And I'm like, yeah, sure, fine. I understand that doctors have priority, and you can't have the doctor call you and not answer, you know. So I literally was on hold over 10 minutes and there was no music or anything. And I kept looking at my phone thinking like, did she hang up on me? But the counter was like the clock was going. So I knew that I was still on hold. So then she finally gets back on the phone and she's like, I'm sorry, thank you for holding. Um, now, what, what was your, what was your concern? You're having trouble sleeping? And I'm like, no. Um, so I had to explain to her again that my red blood cells were low and that my endocrinologist said that it was at a six and anything below a nine usually is cause for a transfusion. And I said, I don't know if you guys want to order um, a transfusion for me at the main Methodist hospital, which they've done before. And so she's like, oh, so you've had transfusions before? And I'm like, yes. And I'm over here thinking that she already has my chart open. And then I said, can you tell me when my last one was? And she goes, oh, sure, sure. Okay, what's your name and your your date of birth? And I'm thinking, like, I already gave that to you. And I thought she would, being a triage nurse, hi, uh, hi, Sherry, hi, Kim, hi, Yolanda. And um, nice to see you guys, too. And so... Um, she just was like, she had too much stuff on her plane and she wasn't giving me the attention that I felt I needed. And I was worried that my blood was so low, you know, um, if I needed to have a transfusion before my appointment, which I had an appointment the following week. And so um, she looks at, she opens up my chart and she looks at it. She goes, oh, okay, I see you've had transfusions before. And I see that, you know, you do run low on your red blood cell. And then I said, I know that my oncologist is out of the country because she was on her honeymoon. I said, but if you can let the on-call doctor know what I should do. And so she's like, well, um, how are you feeling? And I said, well, typically I'm already fatigued because of the chemo that I get every three weeks. But I feel a tiny bit little lightheaded and maybe a little bit dizzy. And she says, well, you have an appointment next week and we're going to run labs on that day. So we'll just wait until then. And I'm thinking like, you want me in my head? I'm thinking, you want me to wait a week? And then we'll just see. And like, to me, I felt like she was like, oh, it's it's not a big deal. You, you'll be fine. Um, we'll just give it another week. And I'm like, what if my numbers drop even further? I don't know. So... Finally, um, I had an appointment for an echocardiogram in the same clinic with my oncologist is at, and um, I started having trouble breathing. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't take a deep breath. I felt like, I don't know, like I just, I couldn't breathe. And I was nervous and scared because I felt like I wasn't getting enough oxygen so when I went to do the echocardiogram, I told the radiologist, I said, um, whenever you do the echocardiogram on me, a lot of times you ask me to take in a big deep breath and hold it. And I said, I'm out of, I'm out of breath and I can't take a deep breath. So I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do. And so I said, after we do the echo, I'm going to go to the nurse's station and I want them to check my oxygen and uh, maybe talk to the on-call uh, nurse, or not the on-call nurse, like the head nurse, and speak with her in person one-on-one -on -one and let her know about all my symptoms and just to make sure that everything is, you know, that we're all on the same page. So he's he does the echocardiogram and then he takes it upon himself, which I didn't know at the time, to take a look at my lungs as well with the 
sonogram um, wand. And so after we were done, you know, he's like, okay, you know, wipe up. Because, you know, they put that jelly or whatever. He's like, okay, wipe up, get get dressed, and I'll wait for you right outside. And I said, okay. So I got dressed, and I'm still, you know, out of breath. I'm huffing and puffing from one, from point A to point B. Luckily, I had my mom with me that day because I was almost certain that I might have to go to the emergency room or, or to the hospital. That's how bad I felt as far as the fatigue and the dizziness and getting oxygen and, and being able to breathe. So he says, um, I believe the reason why you're having trouble breathing is because you have, it looks like fluid in your right lung. So where I'm going to walk you over to the nurse's station and we'll check your oxygen. So he puts the oximeter. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Kim. Um, yeah, I know. Um, so they put the oximeter on my finger. Um, well, actually, they said, okay, well, he told the nurse. And then the nurse says, okay, we'll go back to the lobby, take a seat, and I'll bring the oximeter to you. And I said, okay, so I'm walking down this long hallway, and I don't even make it all the way to the lobby. There's a chair, like, on the side. So I was, like, plopped down in the chair because I'm out of breath already. And um, the radiologist is with me, and then the nurse comes up with the oximeter. She puts it on my finger. And then before I could look down to see what my number is, she takes it off. And she tells the she tells the radiologist something, and then she leaves. And then all of a sudden, I hear her call in the code. Um, I can't remember what code at this point. Let me see if it's in my notes. Uh, I feel scheduled. Explain to radiology technician. Uh, walking to the nurse's station. It doesn't say. She called some kind of code. I think it was like a code white or code gray. I'm not sure. But um, before I knew it, there were like eight to ten people, like staff, surrounding me. And one pulled up with the wheelchair and they're like, we need you to sit in the wheelchair. So I sat in the wheelchair and as I'm sitting in the wheelchair, another nurse is like putting the plastic tubing in my nose and she's connecting it to an oxygen tank and she turns that on and then I'm able to breathe a little bit better. And so the on-call doctor for the oncologist shows up or walks up and the radiologist tells him, you know, this is what I found. She has fluid in her right lung and she's having trouble breathing and her oximeter is reading at whatever. I don't even know what number it was, but it had to have been a little bit alarming for them to call the code and for all these people to come out of nowhere, you know, surrounding me. And so the doctor um, is talking to the radiologist and then he's like, doctor comes to me and my mom's with me, luckily. And he says, okay, you have fluid in your lung. That's the reason why you're having trouble breathing. And you're, I'm going to admit you to Maine Methodist so they could do a thorough synthesis, which is a needle that they put into your, like your back, into the lung space to withdraw any fluid that's in the lung or actually in the lung, not the lung itself, but in the area like the cavity where it is. Um, so I went to the hospital and my, they were waiting for me. They're like, yes, you know, the doctor sent, um, admission paperwork. So we're just waiting on a bed. So I had to sit and I waited for the bed. Hi, Angela. In the part of the school shooting, um, the school shooting. No, um, but, uh, my best friend's family is from Uvalde. And um, some of her second cousin's kids were in that school, but they didn't. Um, I, I don't think there were any lives lost with that family. But yes, thank you so much for asking about the school shooting in Uvalde, which is 
two towns down from me because it's San Antonio and then Castroville and then Uvalde. And we drive through Uvalde every year when we go camping um, at Garner State Park. But anyhow, to get back to my long story, sorry guys, I could talk and talk and talk if you let me. So um, the bed was ready and I went to the bed and uh, let me see, let me look at my notes. Hospital. I was in the hospital for three days. They did an x-ray of my lungs. Um, my red blood cells were low, so they did give me a blood transfusion. Finally, thank goodness. So I got the blood transfusion, and I had to wait um, for those numbers, my blood numbers, to go up before they could do the thoracentesis. So I spent the night, and then um, the following day, sorry about the external noise. My parents are here. Well, this is their house, my parents, my son, and the dogs are going to probably bark in a little bit. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so then um, they gave me, I, I lose track a lot, guys, I'm sorry. So they gave me the blood transfusion. They were waiting for my numbers to come up before they could do the thoracentesis. I ended up spending the night. Then the next day they did x-rays and then they checked my blood, they checked my sugar and my blood started, my blood moved up, which is typical. They said it goes, it spikes and then it kind of lowers and like plateaus or evens out. So they're waiting for that to happen. And then um, finally towards the evening, close to like late afternoon, early evening, they came and got me. Um, and I was so nervous to do the thoracentesis because from all I knew, from what I've heard, is that it's this long, like 18 gauge or bigger um, needle that they stick in your back. And I'm like, and I'm not good with pain, you know. I don't even like giving blood, you know. I can't even look at them when they're doing it. I mean, I, I don't, I'm a big baby when it comes to pain. So anyhow, um, I go and the uh, the person, the nurse of the doctor who's going to do the thoracentesis is talking to me and she's explaining to me the procedure. And I told her, you know, I'm really nervous. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a bit, you know, shaky and I'm just nervous because there's a, you know, big needle that's going to be going into my back, into my lung. And so she was like, the worst part is probably the the tiny little prick that you're going to feel be, that uh, when we numb the area. But once you're numb, more than likely, you're not going to really feel anything. And so I was like, okay. And so, but I always feel like they're just saying that just to make it feel, make you feel comfortable. But no, I mean, I, I felt a little pinch when they started numbing the area and then they started to drain the the lung cavity or whatever so what is it toothbrush yes it's uh poly diamonds you you could give it to me sorry that's my mama <laughs> thank you mom and so um they ended up taking out uh, over a liter. So they filled up one liter and then they had to switch to another liter. And so um, they took out a little over a liter of fluid from my right lung. And after they were done and they removed the needle and all they did was put a Band-Aid, um, I was able to breathe and I'm, I was like, oh my God, I feel so much better. Like I'm able to breathe normal. Um, I was only be able to take like half breaths and I couldn't take deep breaths at all because it would hurt. And that was my worry was that I wasn't going to get enough oxygen and I was going to fall asleep and not wake up because I'm a big worry, worry, wart. <laughs> I worry too much and I, I try not to, but I always think of the worst case scenario and I need to stop doing that because I just freak myself out. 
Um, so then the, I spent the night, they kept, you know, an observation on me. I spent the night. So I spent two nights there at the hospital. And then the following day, my son and my mom came and then, um, the doctor released me. So I was able to get discharged, um, and went home. Let me see this week, Monday, CT. Then I had a CT of the abdomen and the pelvis. And Tuesday, I had more labs done, four tubes, and that was from my liver doctor. And then I had an endoscopy and a colonoscopy the following Wednesday. So it was pretty busy. Um, then I had chemo last Wednesday. And I had the chemotherapy. And so my red blood cells, like I said, they run low. So they ended up giving me a shot that helps boost the red blood cells. And then um, the chemo's caught in her too, so they gave me that. They gave me anti-nausea, they gave me um, like an acid reflux reducer. They gave me pain, and this is all through the IV, through the, um, the port. And then um, I got the, what is it called? Nulasta. I got the Nulasta and it's like this device that they inject with medication and then they stick it on you and then within 24 to 27 hours there's like this little flexible needle that pops into your stomach. Actually it pops into your stomach when they place it that you know after chemo they put it on you and then it inserts into your skin and it's a flexible needle it doesn't really hurt. And then within 24 to 27 hours, it releases medication into me. And that makes my, um, you know, stomach upset. And I'm sorry, I keep hiccuping and I have, keep burping. I apologize. Um, so I got the new Lasta, which helps with the white blood cells. I got the shot which helps with the red blood cells. I got the chemotherapy. And then the nurse says, your doctor's ordering Zometa, which is a bone strengthener. And I like drop to my head and I'm like, oh. she goes, I know, sweetheart, I'm so sorry, but you're, it, you're due for it. And I get it like every few months. And I don't care for it. I mean, I know it's it's helpful. It helps like, with strengthening my bones because I do have cancer that's in my bones, in my spine, in my legs, and you know, it's just in my bones. And um, the reason why I don't like it is because I feel like I can feel it going into my spine, like something being poured into my spine and then like concrete, like wet concrete, liquid concrete, and then it starts to harden and it makes me really, really stiff. And then it makes my legs, the bones in my legs feel real heavy. So like if I have to climb up any stairs or if I have to step up, I like have to really think about it and lift my leg. And if I'm, uh, if I'm at a really weak spot or time during that Zometa, I, and I'd say like I'm wearing pants, I'll have to pull the pant from like above the knee. I pull my pant up just to lift my leg to put it up over like the threshold of the door. Um, it just, it just wears me out. It just makes me more fatigued and more tired. So I got the whole kit in Kabuto on that last Wednesday. And then on Friday, we all took, um, a planned vacation for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sorry, I'm real shaky. Um, we went to the beach. We went to Port Aransas, and we stayed um, two nights, three days. And um, we had a really good time. I always love spending time with my family. The only problem is that they don't they don't have like reclining chairs. And since I've had surgery on the back of my neck and I'm missing three vertebrae, 
um, the C7, the T1, and the T2. So the cervical vertebrae number seven, and then the thoracic, the very first two, the one and two. So I'm missing three vertebrae. And then I have two rods, and I have six or eight screws, I forget. I have to look at the x-rays. But I have titanium rods and screws in my back and in my neck. And then I didn't heal correctly um, from the spinal surgery. And so I'm in pain every day from my neck. And I don't like to take the pain medication all that often. I try to stretch it out because it gives me, it makes me constipated. And that's like no fun, you know, to not be able to go for days and then your stomach gets all hard and you just, it's painful to go. And even with, um, I have Miralax sitting on my desk, I mean, on my table here. Even with Miralax, that doesn't work. I have to drink uh, a cap full a day for like three days for it to finally start to work. And um, I just need to find something that's more powerful. I think that's like too gentle on me. But anyway, um, so that's pretty much all that's been going on with me these past few weeks. Hi, Vickery. Um, I'm going to go ahead and update, not update, but kind of go back to what I said earlier in the video because a lot of you weren't here. For whatever reason, whenever I try to record videos on my phone that's more than two minutes long, my phone starts to get very, very, very hot to the point where I'm like, it's going to fry like the circuits or something. And then the video and the whole camera and my phone shuts off and then anything that I recorded disappears and then um, I have already tried recording this video like four times within the past two weeks and each time I did it you know normally and then I did it like on airplane mode um, I tried all these different things I did it on a full battery uh, thinking maybe my battery is too low to handle it. I don't know. So basically, something's wrong with my phone. And I can't record on it. Like right now, I'm feeling the back of it. It's getting hot. And that's why I had to go live. Because hopefully it'll keep the live. But the re if, I have been, if I had recorded myself on the phone uh, camera, it wouldn't have saved over five minutes or three minutes or two minutes. It would have gotten so hot that it would have just automatically turned the phone off. Um, and it got, it gets so hot to the point where I feel like I need to put it in the refrigerator or the freezer to cool it off. And like I said, it's like ugh, so hot to the touch that I'm thinking like something is going to fry like these wires or the circuits that are inside the camera itself or inside the phone itself. So I don't know how much longer I have to pay off this phone, but I'm thinking I may have to upgrade to the newer phone because this one is like, uh, like five years old. And um, I, I can't really afford it, but I'm going to have to cut back somewhere because, I, um, you know, everybody lives on their phone. So I see that there are 20 people here, and I appreciate each and every one of you. I know a lot of you have sent um, comments and sent messages, and we're just, you know, checking on my well-being and worried for me and I appreciate that so much for you know me popping into your mind every so often um I feel like my body is not the same as it was a year from a year from now I feel a little bit less able 
Um, I was trying to see. I missed the comment. Um, and I just feel like the chemo and everything that I've been taking, because I take like seven medications, and I feel like um, the chemo has just taken its toll on me. And I can't ever recover or get back to where I was like a year or two ago um, as far as how I feel and how I function. Um, and like my son hates when I say stuff like that because he's like, don't say that. Don't. You're going to, you know, um, put it out into the universe or you're going to make something negative happen because you're thinking about about it in a negative way, but I can't help the way I feel. I don't, I'm going to get emotional. I don't feel like I'm going in the right direction as far as healing. Um, I know the cancer hasn't spread anywhere, so I'm so very happy about that. But um, I'm just so like uncomfortable or like, in pain and I'm trying to enjoy all the moments that I have with my family and just smile through through it um, but there's not a time where I'm not in pain except for maybe if I'm asleep but once I wake to toss or to turn because my neck starts to hurt me um, I'm instantly reminded that I'm in pain or I'm hurting or I'm in discomfort. Um, I'm never pain free during my awake time. Um, and I hate to, I hate to be like that, you know, I should appreciate. Um, thank you. I should appreciate and I do appreciate and I do thank God every day for allowing me another day. Um, and I, I know I'm not ready to go. And I want to be here for years and years and years. Um, I want to see my son fall in love and get married and, you know, have a house and be responsible, a, a responsible man. Um and maybe have a baby or two. I mean, I would love to be a grandma and to have, you know, a little one bouncing on my knee. Uh, I wish for all of that. Um, and, and I hope that I'm here for it. And I'm just, um, I think it's just when I'm hurting or when I'm in pain, I feel sad. And I get a little bit depressed. And then I start getting anxious. And, and then I let my mind wander. So I always have to try and like keep my mind busy with videos, watching videos, watching TV, you know, spending time with my dad, watching sports or watching boxing, you know. Um, there's not a whole lot of things that I could contribute to. Like, I'm so um, out of step. Like, if my mom comes home with groceries, I could bring in, like, the light stuff, but I can't bring in anything that has any weight to it, really, because in my neck or my back, it just irritates it even more. And then, like, putting up groceries, you know, I can start and do some, but then I get winded, and then I have to just take a break and sit down. And, um, hi, Shaz. The chemo is making you weak. Yeah. So, I'm in, you know, I love that I'm alive. And I love that I have family. And that we do things and we're very close. Um, and I wish to be here for many, many years to keep enjoying the things that we do, you know, we have a pretty big family, but we're close knit as well. And, um, 
I try to be present whenever I am able to. Um, and if I'm hurting, I'll take the pain just so I can continue having be present and just deal with the pain later. Like today we had a baptismal. My brother's um, son got baptized. So we got up and got ready, went to church. And then, you know, that's like you stand and you sit and you stand and you sit. And there were about mm, maybe 10 other children who got baptized. So they have to do, you know, a certain um, blessings for each of the child, each of the children. And um, I started to, my neck started to bother me, but I'm like, nope, I have to continue sitting here. And, you know, I want to be here. I want to see this. I want to be a witness to it. And I want to have memories and I want to have pictures, you know, and stuff like that. And, um, and then after that, we went to um, his house to have um, pizza and sandwiches, chips and veggie tray and fruit tray and some nachos, you know. So then we were there and um, I brought my neck brace and my head pillow, which is what I'm on right now, this thing that my son gave me. And... Um, you know, we were watching the baseball game, the Texas, and I forgot who they were playing. But it was um, one. It mm -hmm. was the best out of three, and so one Texas won today. The other team won yesterday, so they're tied. So then they're playing again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, we after that we came home, and then I started doing this tape, this video live. And then um, I'm going to turn the light off and I'm going to take a little nap. And then I might head back over to my brother's house a little later because they're going to have a barbecue. Uh, or my brother's going to barbecue some ribs or something like that. And, you know, I want to hang out with my, my siblings and and be there and have, you know, memories, something to look back on. Um, I do have some playlists on my phone that I've made public songs that I put for my son, uh, Diamond songs that I put that meant something between me and my sister, Jennifer, and then songs that mean something for me and my brothers and my nephew. And then my nieces, um, like specific songs that have a meaning to it. And, um, I know a lot of you guys were worried and asking, you know, or making comments like, I hope she's okay. We haven't heard from her in a while, et cetera, et cetera. And so I do want to let you guys know that if something should happen to me, um, my son is going to put up a video, a short video, um, just explaining to you what has happened if something, if I take a turn for the worse. Um, otherwise, if there's just a long stretch between videos, it's just that I don't have the energy and that or my phone isn't allowing me and I'll have to do a live again. Um, or I could just get a new phone. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I can't. I didn't really want to pile on the bills, but. I mean, if I have to get a new phone, I have to get a new phone. So anyhow, um, I need a haircut. I know that, like, my hair is very thin, and it's not really growing. And if you see my pillow, like, um, my hair comes off a lot. So anyhow, I had some makeup on. I had a little bit of energy. I wanted to come on here and just give you guys an update. And to let you know that I appreciate each and every one of you for all of your love and your support, all of your blessings and all of your prayers. Um, it doesn't go past me. It doesn't go unnoticed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end the live now. And um, 
I will see you in the next video. I don't know when that'll be, but I will see you guys in the next video. Um, I might add some pictures to my community tab of the baptismal. Um, either that or maybe try and put together a short video. Um, just because I'm just so very excited and happy for my nephew. For my brother's one and only child or kid. He's going to be three... I think he's gonna be three and man oh man he is a handful but i love him to death so anyways i will see you guys later let me try and figure out how to turn this off